Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar, The Best Social Media Practices for Trade Shows. With me today, I am Stephanie Walter, Director of Exhibition Operations for the Water Environment Federation. Uh, with me today presenting this webinar is Jefferson Davis with Competitive Edge and Rakia Nance, also with the Water Environment Federation. I'm very pleased that she could join us. Rakia is WEF's Digital Communications Manager. Uh, we really, really appreciate you taking some time out of your day for this webinar. We think we're going to cover a lot of really relevant information in a quick period of time. This is a brand new webinar for us, and we are going to get right over to just a quick review of where all of our Exhibitor Success Resource Center material is. As a reminder, this webinar will be recorded and located here in a couple of days. We have two other webinars from earlier, one recorded on June 26th and one last week. That's our first timer webinar and the webinar for small exhibitors, as well as a ton of resources to be downloaded and interactive tools for you. That's as well as other resources for the Exhibitor Toolkit. I want to take a quick moment and introduce Jefferson Davis as well. We here at WEF have been working with him for a number of years putting together Exhibitor education materials. Um, he's the one who's got all of those materials up in that resource center and has made those available and he has been making himself available to exhibitors with all of this excellent information. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this over to Jefferson Rukia. You're probably not gonna hear from me again until the end because this is definitely not my area of expertise and it's all about them. All right, well, thank you, Stephanie. And again, thanks to everybody, first of all, for being an exhibitor at WEFTEC and most importantly for taking time to expand your knowledge, you know? I mean, a core belief that drives me is what got me to where I am today probably won't sustain me for another five years. Things are changing so fast, and I feel like that if we're not keeping up, then we're falling behind. So really glad you've been uh, here with me today. Um, as Stephanie mentioned, I've been around WEFTEC for several years, been on the WEFTEC show floor many, many times, have worked with several WEFTEC exhibitors, helping them really turn their trade show programs around from an expensive appearance, you know, where they were maybe showing up, flying the flag, scanning some badges, handing out some tchotchkes and going home, turning it around into a more productive, more profitable experience. And uh, so I'm really thrilled to be here with you today. Uh, let's jump into the subject matter. We got a lot to cover in a very short period. If you've been with me over the years for the different webinars and content we produce, um, you'll know one thing that I am consistent on. One of the most critical success factors in exhibiting is your ability to get in the mind and on the agenda of enough of the right people before the show opens. And, um, you know, we've done webinars specifically on targeted pre show marketing, which are all up in replay mode on how to discover and deliver your attendee-focused value proposition. And today what we want to do is really kind of take a deeper dive on social media and get into some of the um, best practices, some of research on what exhibitors are doing, um, and then go through the top media and share some specific ideas for integrating and posting for trade shows. So as you'll see on the screen here, there are so many different media you could use to promote your exhibit. And the question that I get hit with quite often is, um, what is the single best media for promoting my exhibit? And my answer is always the same. Um, there is no single best. Uh, the magic is in the mix. Different people respond to different media. And I also get the question, well, how many media should I be using? And my answer is very consistent there, too. As many as your time, your skill set, and your budget allows. Um, what you're almost looking for is omnipresence, to be everywhere, to be everywhere they look. In marketing communications today, they're saying that it takes 
you know, an average of um, six touches to, you know, to get one impression that they actually see. So the more media you combine, the, you know, the more frequency without overdoing it, you know, the stronger your messaging, the higher you're going to cut through the noise and grab the attention of your target audience here. So I want to start off with a poll here before we get into the uh, content. And um, I want to find out um, of those with us here today, uh, prior to the webinar today, do you currently use social media as part of your exhibit marketing program? The poll's open live now. You'll have three choices, yes, no, sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. Fastest fingers, Press the radio dial button that applies, and I'll share the results in one moment. So we're up at about 82% of you have polled. If you haven't polled yet, I'll give you just another moment. We're at 85. All right, thank you. That's a tremendous turnout. Uh, let's share the results. I think it'd be great to see. Well, 71% um, of you do. So I think for those of you who are doing it, um, we're going to hopefully share some ideas and best practices that are going to help you take your social media to another level. For those of you who are in the, no, we don't, uh, this will serve as a great primer in terms of media, the objectives, how exhibitors are measuring, uh, what channels to use, and uh, what type of stuff to be posting, when and with what frequency. For those of you that are in the sometimes, um, hopefully it'll encourage you to just integrate social media as a routine standard operating marketing procedure as part of your program. So thanks for sharing on that. So, you know, the pros and cons, right? When you look at the pros, for the most part, unless you're buying pay-per-click and doing some of the more advanced stuff, social media is free. Um, it's not quite as intrusive as email. I know a lot of us today are really doing a lot of email and, um, well, email is the new junk mail. You know, the average business person today is getting, according to the last research study I saw, the average business person today is getting 147 emails a day. And then you have um, junk and spam filters and continually changing firewalls. So um, I'm not saying don't use email, but don't try to win the race with a one-legged horse. That's a hard race to win. Adding social media is a powerful way. It'll help you really extend your reach beyond the floor and the exhibit hall, both before, during, and after. Um, you know, it'll help you really get access to like people of similar minds and even people that are hard to reach, people that you can't get on the telephone, people you can't really in interact with. Um, messages can go viral really quickly if you come up with a um, really great message, a great story, a great video the ability to have that um, circulate and go viral. And now with you know technology and phones and internet and er everything, it's easy to post on the fly. You know, you can be capturing content, you know, anywhere. You can be capturing your content on the way to the airport, you know, uh, on the taxi, when you get to the convention center, while you're in the center. So there's a lot of reasons why we should, you know, the cons are sometimes our expectations are maybe too high. You know, we think we're going to send out one tweet and we're going to get like 5,000, you know, followers and 200 retweets. And it doesn't usually or always work like that. Sometimes the results are not quick, you know, so it's not like we can just flood the social media channel and necessarily win the game. And the big question, I think, for all of us is with the explosion of social media channels is where do we focus, right? Um, it's really hard. Uh, to be effective in all those different media at once. And as we'll talk about today, you know, each channel, its users have certain preferences. And so it's hard to be, you know, like on all these channels. Uh, it takes time. There are ways to reduce the amount of time, which we'll talk about today. And there's a learning curve. You know, it's like a, there's a lot of trial and error. There's a lot of testing, uh, messaging, content, timing, uh, whether to have a click through or a call to action. Uh, there's so much to learn. Sometimes outside of friends, followers, likes, or tweets or retweets, um, sometimes it can be difficult to gauge the impact. And it seems like with most of the channels, that the rules and the algorithms behind the social media platform seem to be changing, especially with 
Facebook and a lot of the, um, you know, the news stories and everything going on. So the question is, uh, should we be using it? The answer is yes. You know, uh, the cons kind of will help us brace for what we maybe should or shouldn't do. So what I want to ask you, I'm going to share with you in a moment here, um, Exhibitor Magazine, which, by the way, if you're not reading Exhibitor Magazine, I encourage you to do so. It is hands down, I think, the best B2B marketing, exhibit marketing magazine in the world. Um, Exhibitor Show, which happens um, every February, March in Vegas. If you're not going to that, you should look into that. It's really the gathering of the best minds in the industry. It's the showcasing of all the technologies. It, what a place to go rub elbows with your colleagues. Um, so Exhibitor Magazine and Exhibitor Show, I think, are for anybody who's serious about exhibiting, uh, is going to want to be involved in those. So what I want to ask before I share this research from Exhibitor uh, Magazine is um, what platforms do you use for promoting trade shows right now? The polls open. Um, and I believe this is a check all that apply uh, type, hopefully. If it's not, then pick your main one and go ahead and do that now. Let me take a peek and we'll share the results and see what's happening uh, with with the WefTech exhibitor universe. So here we go. Uh, polls live. And I'll give you just a few seconds here on, on three, two, one. If you drifted away, come back with me. Uh, I promise you these next 30 minutes are going to be high value time. Okay, we're at about 80% of you have polled, so let's go ahead and share the results. And you'll see, number one, uh, that in this exhibitor universe, uh, that eight, LinkedIn is number one. 88% of you are using LinkedIn. 73% are on Facebook, 54% Twitter. Surprisingly, only 4% on Instagram. And I think uh, we're, we've got a little surprise for you on that as we move into Instagram. And 12% of you are using some of the other channels. So thanks for sharing on that. Um, Exhibitor Magazine, right, uh, did a 2018 of social media survey, and um, they asked the, you know, the exhibiting universe, um, what channels, wh which platforms are you using to promote your exhibit? And you'll see on the screen the image here, and number one uh, the, in the Exhibitor universe was uh, Facebook at uh, 81%, number two, uh, Twitter at 79%. And number three was LinkedIn at 66%. So all of you are kind of in, in alignment with that um, study. Um, the next, uh, the chart you'll see there, to me, I think is really important. Um, what objectives, okay? Why are you using it? What objectives are you trying to accomplish? And which one has really social media helped? Number one, I think, which is why we're all exhibiting, 83% said increasing brand awareness. 69% said increasing their website or their microsite traffic. And number three, I really, really, really like, 57% said it has increased booth traffic. And those would be, you can see the other objectives, but all three of those tie perfectly well into our uh, exhibit marketing program. Okay. Um, next, it, it, Asked, what metrics? How are you measuring? How are you measuring the impact of your social media efforts? And you'll see the number of impressions was at the top. Tweets, retweets, or mentions tied with posts, comments, or likes for number two. And number three was click through rates. So I think what's important right now as we begin to peel this onion, if you will, is for you to think about what objectives that you have set for your social media campaigns and what metrics you're using to track and see if there's anything you've missed from this research. And again, I would strongly encourage you to uh, subscribe to Exhibitor Magazine. It's, it, it's at the top of my stack every month as, in terms of a must read. Um, so now we're gonna kind of go into almost like a David Letterman, a top 10 type list here and just kind of hit 10 social media ideas here, practices that are really focused on trade shows. Number one, uh, top of the list is like if you're new to social media and you're short on time, which who isn't, right? <laughs> all of us, then don't try to dabble in all the options. You know, you don't want to be the, you know, the jack of all social media, but the master of none, right? Um, so I think it's better to try to really narrow it down to the top, maybe two as a starting point. The ones that really align with your industry, uh, your company, your culture, and 
seem to be a good fit for your product services. Um, once you start, just you got to commit to consistency. Consistency wins the game. So you'll want to commit. And we're going to talk in a moment about developing a social media plan and a posting calendar. But those would be some, some best ideas there. I'm going to bring uh, Rakia uh, Vance on from WEF. Um, again, she's our digital communications manager. And Rakia is going to take us into some of the this number two practice on really understanding and piggybacking on show management's efforts. Rakia? Yes, thank you so much, Jefferson. I'm excited to to share my knowledge with you all. Um, I've been at WEF for going on three years now, and the bulk of what I do focuses on our social media presence. Um, a lot of it falls to engaging our followers, um, and that goes to knowing who they are, what their preferences are, and then tying that into the messages that we want to convey. Um, and the second point, piggybacking on show management's efforts, um, I can tell you that for WebTech, what we like to do is engage and interact. We want people to, to learn um, from us and also from each other. So if, there's, if you can find a way to tie that messaging and those larger themes into your social media content, that would be a great way um, to align with what we're doing. Um, the theme for WEF Tech 2019 is workforce regeneration, um, and that's workforce regeneration with a capital G, um, and that refers to the idea of um, this large body of water sector professionals working together, um, constantly learning, rethinking uh, new approaches to these long-standing challenges facing the water sector. Um, and so if your products or tools or services, if you can find a way to tie that into that larger theme and then illustrate it and promote that in your social media content, that's another good way to kind of tie into what we're doing. Um, one of the things that a lot of exhibitors do is inv provide instructions in their social media posts. Um, you'll hear this referred to as maybe a call for action. Uh, so it might be stop by at booth number whatever, or come say hi, um, follow us and this will happen, we'll retweet this. So that's another way to get your followers engaged. Um, a lot of social media platforms, you'll hear people talking about these large numbers of followers, um, which is, is nice, but it kind of acts as a vanity metric if those followers aren't engaged. Um, I need to back up a little bit and mention that we have Water Environment Federation, we have multiple social media platforms. For WebTech, however, we've parsed out our social media platforms, and you can see our handles here. On Twitter, it's at WebTech, and the hashtag is WebTech19. On Facebook, we have a separate uh, Facebook page for all things related to WebTech. And on Instagram, which is actually um, our newest social media platform, we streamline all of our WEF Tech related content in with our um, WEF account, which is at WEF underscore org. All right. Um, thank you, Rakia. Um, you had mentioned Instagram, and so LinkedIn didn't really show up here. Is there some data or some research that you have seen or found that? Kind of gives us an idea that the that the water um, universe is engaging with Instagram. Is that what's driving that? So with Instagram, um, as I mentioned, that's kind of the baby on the block for our social media platforms. We started that about three years ago, um, and I will back up again and say that each of these platforms, generally speaking, has kind of these defining characteristics when it comes to demographics. Um, we find that Facebook, for example, tends to have more baby boomers and older generation X. Uh, Twitter has a lot of generation X and millennials. That's not to say that baby boomers aren't on Twitter, but the kind of the dominant generations that you see are generation X through millennials and a little bit of generation Z. When it comes to Instagram, it skews even younger with a lot of millennials and a lot of Generation Z, 
on Instagram. So one of our, um, our, our main thrusts with Instagram is trying to introduce WEF and WEF Tech um, what we do and what we stand for to younger generations as we're trying to uh, address workforce issues and trying to introduce the water sector and water sector careers to students and young professionals. Um, and here again, it's not just WEF Tech, but also talking about the Water Environment Federation as a, a technical and educational organization, the benefits of membership. Um, the types of careers that are offered um, and the many, many opportunities that we have there. Um, when it comes to West Tech, one of the things that Instagram does is provide a lot of visual content. Um, Instagram is, is image driven and we can also do a lot of uh, things where we put people in the moment. All right, thank you. Uh, so, so I think you really added a lot of value to the these different media in terms of the generations and what media they social media they tend to be engaging with and I think mm -hmm. uh, that's really important I think for all of us as exhibitors to keep in mind as we create content and use each one of these platforms that we that we think and and we're going to come back and go a little more into these audiences too as we go on so uh thank you Rikia uh, some great information about webtex uh, efforts um number 3 um you know Try to figure out what channels your audience is paying attention to. This could be done on inbound and outbound calls. Um, if you have a call center, whoever's manning customer service phones, just ask. Make it a standard question as part of the call. Um, and really make sure the question's sharp. You want to ask about what social media are you using for business, right? Because they may be using it in our personal life, but you want to know that. Um, you know, there's a lot of quick survey tools that can be generated through e emails like SurveyMonkey, the ability to set up a two or three question uh, survey and um, e email it out. I mean, I would start with my customers, you know, and, and, and look for trends there. Um, I might, would survey my top 100 customers and see if I can't get a trend line about which channels they're most using for social media. Uh, when you do get into the channels, uh, look for groups. Uh, groups are really powerful. LinkedIn has a really strong uh, groups. Uh, join them, post content, um, and also keep an eye on and uh, respond to posts. Uh, it's a great place to um, build that community. And, um, you know, people that are retweet, um, you know, like the retweets uh, and, and, you know, engage. You don't want to jump on them too quick, you know, that it feels like you're monitoring Big Brother's watching and you're right on top of their posts. But like the retweets and just watch the type of content being posted and uh, just engage as you see fit uh, to help you build that audience out post frequency number four for trade shows um, again this posting calendar that lines out the media the dates the topics the links the content which we'll show you one in a moment um, and then if you're already using social media um, take a look at your current posting schedule and try to fold your trade show frequency into your current schedule. Obviously, I, you'll ratchet it up a little more before, during, and after a show, but do keep in mind your current posting schedule. Uh, here's just an example or a sample of a schedule. You know, For some of you, if you haven't really started using it on trade shows, about two months before showtime, uh, you would want to be out there at least weekly, You know, uh, starting two months, and then as you get into that three to four weeks before showtime, uh, maybe two to three times a week. As you get closer, you move into that one to two week range before the show, three to five times a week. Um, daily during the show, if you um, have things to post, which we'll talk about in a minute, and um, two to three times a week in the weeks following up the show. You know, I mean, it's all testing, it's all trial and error, but this will at least if you started here and you build out your calendar, you would have a consistent campaign and you'd be able to build your messaging and build upon the story that you want to tell. Uh, number five, can't cannot say this enough. Um, in your posts, be sure to use the name Westech and the show hashtag. This will immediately step, uh, establish relevance. You're essentially leveraging the incredible brand that WEF and Westech has out in the community. Um, Keep your posts short, um, use videos, uh, use uh, photos. 
for example, I had just partnered with the Trade Show News Network, and we were on show floors. We're doing our E3 program, which we do at WefTech, and uh, we were working with them doing uh, off-the-floor posts. And we noticed something interesting was that when we sent a short video versus just a photo and copy, when we sent a video, the, the video views, likes, and comments were two to three times higher than just the straight picture with a copy. So video is obviously uh, exploding, and we'll talk about YouTube in a moment. Um, photos, video, and you know there are live streaming options today. Face, you know, Facebook Live. Uh, there's a couple. Uh, Periscope, Meerkat, which are live streaming uh, portals for things like, you know, you've got a product launch, uh, you've got a really cool in-booth demo, uh, you know, you're doing theater educational sessions in your booth and you want to really broadcast those out to the universe. Um, those are all great uses. Um, but remember, you know, keep it short, uh, photos, videos. Content, you know, the two words that I think most about in marketing is relevance and importance. People notice what's relevant to them. They engage with what's important to them. So think about the issues and the challenges and the goals and the uh, federal regulations and the local environmental things and these top of the mind issues and try to post around those. As Rakia mentioned, um, this work workforce regeneration is a theme, knowing that that theme is going to get pushed all over the industry if you're tying into regenerating the workforce, uh, you're going to get a lot of traction on that. Um, when you're talking about your exhibit and you're trying to really get them to put you on their agenda, um, you want to think about the visitor experience. And I always think about it in terms of what are they going to see, what are they going to do, what are they going to learn, and what are they going to get by visiting your exhibit. So you could build a series of posts that center around see, do, learn, and get. Uh, and those are key words that'll kind of help you get noticed. And, you know, most of us are in competitive marketplaces, so trying to figure out what your USP, your unique selling proposition is, and, uh, you know, weaving that into your content too is gonna be very strong. Number eight, new is a magnet. Write that phrase down, new is a magnet. We have evaluated almost 27,000 exhibits now. And we are absolutely blown away by how many exhibitors have something new in their booth, but are not featuring it and not aggressively promoting it. Almost all of the research on trade show attendee behaviors tell us that the primary, one of the top reasons they enter the exhibit hall and what draws their attention is they want to see what is new and who's new. So if you got something new, scream it from the top of the mountain. Um, number nine, um, you always want to think about what do I want my reader to do after reading my post? Sometimes maybe there's not a call to action. Sometimes it's just something, you know, informative. It's just filling space. But most of the time, you'll want to have some form of a call to action. It might be uh, click here if you haven't registered and the show offers uh, expo passes. Click here to grab your expo pass. Click here to register for the show. Uh, click here to download this white paper, this industry intelligence report. Uh, click here to visit this site. Um, place your call to actions um, at the beginning and at the end of the copy. So you'll want to try to have them at least twice in there. And finally, for our top 10 list here, just remember it's about knowledge sharing. It's about community. It's about conversations. It's not so much about hard selling. Uh, as you put out good content that teaches your market, uh, informs, instructs, it'll really help your position as a thought leader. And, you know, we're seeing a lot more and more today of showing the human side of your business, the people behind your business. Maybe you just developed some breakthrough new technology in, uh, you know, sludge or grit, and maybe the engineer at your company is uh, this, this amazing scientist that figured this out. And, you know, people at the end of the day do business with people. So if you can weave the human side of your business into your post, you'll be fine. Starting um, conversations within groups, uh, monitoring and adding to conversations in groups, and links to content, white papers, videos, reports, content-rich videos. 
sharing other thought leaders' content too. I mean, if it's relevant, you know, um, everybody wins when somebody shares, you know, so uh, that's a good way to go too. And you're also leveraging their brand. So those are our top 10 practices. Um, um, one of the big things we've talked about over and over and over again is um, building your social media calendar. And on the screen, you're just seeing an example of where it's color coded by the channel. Uh, they've got the time of day they're going to post, which we're going to talk about in a moment, the types of content, what it is, the topic, the specific copy, and any links. And Facebook and Twitter both have pretty strong native uh, tools built into it. But there's also social media aggregator type sites like Hootsuite was one of the first ones into the space. Now there are many, many good ones, and we've listed these in no order of priority, but these are the top seven. Uh, that I've seen that seem to show up everywhere. So uh, time pressured, uh, want to be able to go to one place and manage all this, uh, social media aggregator is going to help a lot. Uh, so I'm going to bring Rakia back on. Uh, we're going to take the top five media. She's going to talk a little bit about, you know, the audience messaging and, and folding it into a trade show. And then her and I will bounce back and forth where I'll go into some posting ideas specifically for shows. So Rakia, take us into Facebook. All right. Um, thank you again, Jefferson. Um, a few slides back, Jefferson mentioned authenticity and the idea that uh, people want to know that they're communicating with people. Even though it is a brand, they don't want to necessarily be marketed to um, in that hard sell way on social media. Um, and Facebook is a really good way to illustrate that point. Um, one of the things that we do on our Facebook pages uh, is keeping the conversation and the tone upbeat and conversational. Um, if there is a comment acknowledging the person by name, let's say a person named Joe Smith has a comment or a question, and it's as simple as responding, hi, Joe, thanks for your comment or thanks for your question. Um, and that way, it's, it's more personal. You add that personal touch. Um, a lot of people are looking at social media profiles and making judgments, generalizations, even decisions based on not just interactions that they have, but how they've seen you and your company and your brand interact with others. Um, so those are some things to keep in mind when it comes to authenticity. And in addition, if you have a, a graphics team that's putting together these beautiful images and um, very slick uh, graphics and infographics and what have you, that's wonderful. Um, everybody loves seeing the efforts of that. But you can also mix it up with kind of these behind the scenes posts. Um, if you have pictures of the people who are actually doing the, doing the work and bringing these services and making the products, that's also another way to add that authenticity to your social media content. Um, Facebook does have decidedly longer character limits than what you would see on Twitter, but just because you can post more text in, in your, um, your copy here doesn't mean that you necessarily should, um, which brings us to our second point. Your messaging should be direct and to the point, um, you should be concise. If you're typing and you get into that see more dot 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 territory, you're going to want to consider uh, scaling it back. Uh, there's a lot of content that is rifled through on social media, and a way to kind of break through all of that uh, content is to make your content concise. Um, say what you need to say. Um, and again, going back to Jefferson's point, you'll need to say it more than once. Um, he mentioned the statistics that sometimes the message needs to be seen about a half dozen times for it to resonate. Um, and you'll want to say it, you know, sometimes it'll be verbatim. Sometimes you might alter the words a little bit. But, uh, again, you should get to the point and then remember your repetition. Um, some of you mentioned that you're using social media to drive traffic to your website, which is an excellent approach. Um, and that brings us to the third point. Um, using links so that people can get more information. And again, that's where you want to keep in mind the brevity of the, the post. Um, for a lot of our posts having to do with West Tech, we're giving information on registration, on costs, on fees, 
instructions, um, mobile app information, facility tours, and it's very detailed information. So what I'll do, I'll put the hook there in the, the text of the post and then say, learn more at this link. Um, and even if the link is very long, there are link shorteners. Some are built into the social media platforms or you may use a, a third party. Um, there's a site called Bitly that um, is an excellent link shortener if you need to do that. Um, when it comes to trade show uses, um, Jefferson, did you want to uh, tag team on this one? Or did you want yeah. To yeah, yeah, I will. And uh, we're, it's hard to believe we're, we've got like less than 10 minutes, so we'll have to crank up a little bit here. But uh, okay. number one, company page, uh, set up your Facebook company page. Number two, the ability to have an event page that would uh, really list WefTech. Uh, and for that matter, how, however many shows you're doing, the ability to put a tab on your Facebook page that will really showcase your upcoming shows. And Facebook really has some incredible targeting tools that would allow you to post your messaging. Um, when it comes to uh, posting ideas, best times of day, uh, we've been doing some research here and found Thursday and Friday between 1 and 4 p.m. Typically, you'll see an 18% spike and Saturday and Sunday between 12 and 1. Since you don't necessarily want to be posting working on the weekends, that's where your social media aggregator can come into play. The highest and best use, some of these will be repetitive, so I'm not going to repeat these post ideas as we go on, but job one, announce your exhibit. Uh, you know, the show name, the dates, the venue, your booth number, what you're going to be showing, and why they should come visit you. Uh, pictures and videos we talked about of your product in action, of uh, client interviews, of maybe your product and even your exhibit being created. Um, we've talked about the see, do, learn, get, is you could build a whole series of posts right around those four talking points. And if you have um, unique giveaways or you're going to be a, doing a presentation, demonstration, celebrity appearances, or hospitality events, these are all great uh, posting things. So, uh, Rakia, give us some of the high points here on Twitter. What do they really need to know here about Twitter? Sure. Uh, Twitter has a faster pace than what you'll find on Facebook. Um, again, the character limit is uh, one of the defining features of Twitter. You're limited to 280 characters, and that's letters, spaces, punctuation, all of that has to fit within 280 characters. Hashtags are another defining feature of Twitter. And what I tell people a hashtag is, think of it as a digital filing cabinet. So let's say you wanted to look up um, what people are saying, what people had to say about last year's WebTech. That hashtag was WebTech18. So if you put that in the search engine, everything, every conversation that included that hashtag would come up. Um, and that's a way to group related content together. So it works a few ways. You can get in on a conversation. You can um, make sure that your content is visible to others who are interested in those conversations by using specific hashtags. Um, and again, you'll want to use links so that you can direct your followers to more information. Um, what we've been, what we do with uh, WebTech social media on Twitter, leading up to the event, we use it to build anticipation. Um, sometimes we like to jog memories of past WebTechs and use that as a springboard for looking forward to what's uh, coming up this year. Um, and also as a means of information, sometimes people are more apt to go to social media to find information about an, an event or company than they would be to go to a website. All right. Uh, th thank you. A few ideas here. Um, encourage your customers and your booth visitors to tweet and retweet. Um, a lot of exhibitors are putting experiential things in the booth where the person can take a picture or a selfie or even they have a photographer in the booth that, that can send them a digital image. Uh, this is a way to kind of get that going. And we're seeing a lot more action with uh, Twitter, either video screens or even video walls in the booth. Some of the posting ideas, um, best times of day for Twitter, uh, Monday through Friday, 12 to 3 p.m. and 5 p.m., 16% bump in uh, views. Um, short videos, um, links to videos, really powerful. Um, rewards, uh, polls, games, interactive devices on Twitter. LinkedIn, uh, Rakia, what's different about LinkedIn? 
Sure. LinkedIn, I almost look at as a digital networking site. Um, a lot of our web tech efforts, we limit to Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram because of that. Um, sometimes we might mention uh, kind of the technical related things, um, but we also have a lot of industry related groups. They might be talking specifically about stormwater in those groups or collection systems, um, very um, kind of community oriented groups. And once you dig down in there, you'll see some of those uh, more technical conversations um, as far as uh, what we're doing for WebTech. Um, a lot of people are looking to connect with like-minded people to share ideas or job opportunities. So if anything, I'd say that we might post about, hey, we've got a job fair coming up. Don't forget to bring your resume. Or, hey, come to West Tech where you can connect with people in your industry and share ideas on longstanding issues. Yeah, you know, uh, some of the ideas here, a company page for sure. Make it keyword rich, uh, keywords that relate to the industry. A showcase page similar to Facebook gives you the ability to um, kind of update. Groups on LinkedIn are really important. And when the trade show has a LinkedIn group, uh, be sure to join that. Some of the posting ideas that aren't repetitive is the uh, best days and times, Tuesday, 10 to 11 a.m., Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday at 7.30 a.m. or between 5 and 6 p.m., Big takeaway here, the moment you know you're exhibiting, I would send an event invite to your, your entire connection universe, um, and I would be promoting in the specific LinkedIn groups. Um, remember, this is networking and learning, so this is the place where you'll really want to focus on what you can learn by visiting your exhibit. Um, because people are there to learn stories, um, videos, uh, downloadable um, case studies, uh, problem agitation solution. These are all powerful things. And one final point on LinkedIn. Once you do get connected, InMail has a one out of four open rate. General B2B email has a three out of 100 open rate. So really take advantage of the InMail function when you're using LinkedIn. Um, YouTube, tell us a little bit about Rakia. We've only got about three or four minutes to go here. Um, Okay. Tell us a little bit about YouTube and what you think they may need to know about using YouTube. Sure. YouTube, because it's video, it's a powerful, powerful tool for engaging followers. Our YouTube channel acts more as a repository or archive for videos that we've done and also for our longer form videos. Um, if you were at West Tech last year, you probably remember the uh, launch of our Refresh Water's Worth It campaign. Um, and this is where we house that main video, also the video that kicked off our My Water Legacy campaign from a few years back. Um, we also have video series that we house on our YouTube channel. Um, but you might want to, you may consider a product demo or a live stream of an event that's happening at your booth. Um, those are just a couple of, of examples of things that you can do with YouTube. Yeah, key, uh, the key ideas here on YouTube is um, be sure to use the show name and hashtag. Uh, really attach those to your videos. Um, as Rakia said, you can't say it better than that. It's a repository for your videos, which then you'll be deploying through a lot of your other channels. Um, teaser videos are super hot. Just kind of, you know, uh, if you remember when they introduced the Mazda Miata, the commercials had the car covered with a like a drape and the wind blew similar to Marilyn Monroe and all you saw was the the rear bump quarter panner on the wheel and so people get really intrigued by that uh, I've seen some really cool time lapse videos of a, an exhibitor's booth being from all, from you know when they move in to set it up um, video content from the show uh, in booth activities uh, educational sessions and posting to the channels our last channel, and we've only got a minute or two here to go, but Instagram, uh, tell us about that, Rakia. What do we need to know? Sure. Again, this is image-driven. Um, the the quality of the image is going to take precedence over the caption, I would say. Um, but the cool thing about Instagram is that you can also use features like Instagram Stories or Instagram Live to put your followers there in the moment with you. And we do that with our operations challenge. Um, and it's nice because you can – document the events of a day or two days or however long it is using Instagram stories. And you can also make these features, so that's the first thing people see um, once they come to your Instagram channel. 
Um, and again, similar to Twitter, hashtags are important on Instagram. Followers can actually follow hashtags. So if you want to reach people who are interested in engineering, you might use the that hashtag engineering. And if they're following that hashtag, the, that content will come up in that feed because they follow it. And you can use up to 30 hashtags in Instagram posts. Nice. You know, another thing when you're taking photos at different locations, geotagging your photo as to where it was taking uh, is the best practice on Instagram. Best times of day uh, on Instagram, Monday and Thursday, anytime but not 3 to 4 p.m. Uh, Wednesday at 5 p.m. and 7 p.m. Um, I, what Rakia said, which I think is, is building a story. Many of you have multiple problems you solve, multiple uh, solutions you deliver and the ability to use the unique features of Instagram to tell a story in bite-sized chunks over time. Uh, that's really powerful. If you're doing any form of contest or promotions uh, in the booth, uh, it, you know, your photo with a logo, what you're giving away and the word uh, giveaway, you know, tag to it. And again, always asking people to like, retweet, and follow. Okay, uh, boy, I wish we had more time. It feels like this went fast, and I feel like we've covered a lot, and yet I feel like we've scratched the surface. So let's kind of summarize this up and um, open for Q&A. Social media is a powerful media. If you're not integrating it, please start. It'll help brand. It'll create engagement with your audience, and it's proven to drive booth traffic. Uh, don't try to be the master of all the platforms. Really drill down to your top two or three. Um, think about what Rakia talked about and the preferences we gave you of the different users in terms of the generations and how they want, tend to experience each platform. The posting calendar, just can't say enough about thinking that through with your team. Once you get it set, it's plug and play. And always, always, always uh, integrating uh, the show's hashtags, show names in your post. And um, short videos seem to be out pulling just straight images and copy. And remember, it's about community engaging and educating. So with that, I'm going to open it for questions. And uh, while I do, I'm going to toss it back to Stephanie Walter with any additional thoughts or closing comments from WefTech. So I just want to thank everybody for hanging out for the entire time of this webinar and making it all the way through, even though we ran a little bit long, not too long, two minutes. So pretty pretty close um, and once again Rakia thank you so much for joining us and offering your expertise on this topic and really just leaving me to listen so <laughs> happy to help yes and uh, Rakia um, you know given that you're really driving uh, WefTech's uh, social media and digital uh, communications platforms what would be like you know the closing thought from you if there was something hey if there's something you're going to do with social media relative to really improving your trade show what would that be from your perspective I would say be present um I think as you mentioned it's definitely better to be really really good at maybe one or two platforms than to be everywhere and doing it poorly and inconsistent um so you know, be present and be consistent and have fun. Yeah, have fun. You know, that's you can't say it better than that. If it is, I mean, if it's not fun, it, I mean, is it really worth doing? But uh, yeah, so hopefully, I'm not seeing any questions. That's probably telling me that hopefully you've we've torn through. You've scribbled down a lot of actionable ideas. I would say let the learning continue. The Exhibitor Success and Resource Center has about ten, fifteen thousand dollars of free trade show productivity uh, knowledge resources. It's all free. It's all part of your package. Uh, you've got an incredible team at WEF that doesn't believe in just renting you concrete and hoping it all works out. They've been committed to really pressing with ongoing exhibitor education. And we thank you so much for being on the webinar, taking the time, and uh, we will see you on the Exhibitor Success Resource Center. And we'll see you at WEF Tech, hard to believe, in about nine weeks. So this concludes our webinar today on social media. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day. And uh, we will see you again very soon. Thanks for logging in, everybody. Bye.